these four 15 millimeter bolts were held in with Loctite, so the best thing to do was heat treat them with this heat gun here, and that loosens up the Loctite. You don't put it on for too long, just enough for the heat to soak through the bolt and warm up the Loctite to its melting point, and then it comes off fairly easy. Well, at least with respect to other bolts. This one I've already treated a little bit. You can see it's backed out. And then I'm just using a normal wrench to, to work it out. Looks like either eight millimeter or five thirty second bolts. Eight of them that'll have to be removed. To remove the gear shifter knob, all you really have to do is just grab it and pull really hard. And try not to hit yourself in the face. Ultimately, it's held in. These safety torques are actually fake. They're not real. Just a couple of tabs there. I think you can just sort of yank on it and pull and wiggle its way out. There we go. And off it comes. Well, I just broke that linkage plastic, but you see how rotten that was. I'll have to order a new one of those. Stupid plastic parts. We've also got to remove the green snap-on clip. Right here. Try not to break that. Go. And off it comes. And we also have to remove all these electrical connections. We'll start with just the little zip tie clips. Just pop these out.
end over on the passenger side. Have to disconnect this cable linkage right here. You see there's two cables held in by that bracket with the single 10 millimeter nut. Okay, we've just about got all the wires disconnected from the transfer case and transmission. Now we'll disconnect the slave cylinder here using a 13 millimeter socket. Shallow sockets just deep enough. Maybe a deep well would have been better, but this one should suffice. Next up is disconnecting the exhaust. There are four bolts, two on each side of the transmission, passenger side and driver side. Uh, two 15 millimeter bolts on each side. These don't need an impact wrench. They uh, were pretty easy enough to get off with a standard uh, half inch socket. And the second bolt is gonna be right up in there. You'll do this for both sides. Because I broke the metal bracket holding the uh, exhaust to the exhaust manifold, uh, the metal bracket held this square nut in place. So I took the fender off for easy access. The fender came off fairly easy, but you see that right there. That little metal bracket was designed to hold the nut in place, but uh, it's such a flimsy piece of metal when I started torquing on it it just broke it in half but now I can get to it with a wrench just by taking the fender off passenger side bolts for the cross member to the training. These are 5 8 deep well socket is preferred.
We'll insert the spline key in there so that it's good and centered. There we go. plate on. There we go. Now we'll just put a couple of the screws in right now. Finger tight just to keep it in place. And then we'll tighten them down making sure to use the proper torque settings and the circular action very similar to what I just did but mostly just like opposite sides and make sure the pressure all goes down equal. <laughs> 